So we are uh, on Trail Ridge Road in Rocky Mountain National Park, and you're looking at Matt Spencer, who's a Penn State grad and became a great professor of geology, standing next to some really interesting outcrops. And on top is this dark metamorphic rock, and below it is a granite that was intruded into a crack in the metamorphics and then froze there. So a fascinating looking place to, to go visit if you're ever up on Trail Ridge Road. I strongly recommend it. Here is the metamorphic rock viewed a little closer. And if you know often that metamorphic rocks are sort of folded and you can follow the folds in the layers of the rock here if you look carefully. Um, and so that is, is on there. And then if we go and look just next to the metamorphic rock, you can see the contact where the metamorphic rock meets the granite. The metamorphic rock was probably hot when the granite was squeezed in, but the granite was hotter. And so the granite froze faster, cooled faster, and got smaller crystals right next to the metamorphic rock. And so you can see the chilled margin of that granite when it got squirted in there. All right, so then we um, can go back and see Matt standing next to this. In this environment, the granite weathers a little faster, so it's sort of saved where it's being protected by the metamorphic on top. Let's now zoom in and look at granite. This is actually a different granite from down the hill, but a lot of granites look very similar. That is my um, index finger at the bottom sticking in there. And we'll zoom in some more, and you'll notice that the granite is made of grains. Some of those grains are little gray ones with the arrows pointed at them. They are a mineral called quartz. The chemical formula of quartz is SiO2. Sometimes it's called silica. The SI stands for silicon. The O is oxygen. When the granite weathers, the quartz basically just stays as quartz and makes quartz sand. The arrows are now pointing at feldspars. There's actually two different feldspars in here, but they're very similar. Feldspars include the silica, the SiO2. They all have aluminum, and some of them have calcium, Ca, or sodium, Na, or potassium, K. You do not need to memorize this. The formulas of the feldspars are Kal, Si308, and then sort of a range between the calcium one and the sodium one shown there on the bottom. When the feldspars weather, they make clay. And the clay tends to keep the potassium K and then a lot of the aluminum, the Si and the O, plus a little water. And the calcium Ca and the sodium Na dissolve and wash away to the sea. There's a dark mineral. In this one, it is biotite. In some, it's a different mineral. So we won't worry too much about that mineral. You don't have to memorize biotite. Uh, the dark mineral always has some silica, uh, and it almost always has some magnesium, Mg, and some iron, Fe, and maybe some other things. We have now named eight elements oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium. And that order is the eight commonest elements in the crust of the earth. That's more than 99% of the crust of the earth. When the granite weathers and the dark mineral breaks down, it releases magnesium that washes to the sea and iron that rusts and stays in the soil. So granite breaks down to give sand, clay and rust that stay as soil, usually with added worm poop or other formerly living things. And granite gives dissolved materials that wash to the sea where the calcium goes into shells, the sodium makes the sea salty, the magnesium may go into shells or react with rocks. Eventually, the soil, the sand and clay and rust wash to the sea and they go down subduction zones with the salty water and the shells and the rocks to melt under volcanoes and make new granite. But that takes a long time, 
at least a lot of millions of years and maybe hundreds of millions of years or longer.